In my financial career, I've taken over the New York Stock Exchange and I know how to make money move. Now, I'm inviting you to get all the way in your bag and never look back. Hey everyone, welcome to With the Bag to Match, brought to you by Spring Hill and JP Morgan Wealth Management. My name is Lauren Simmons, and I'm just gonna tell you now, when it comes to money, we're getting into it all. Our goal is to crack open the conversation on money management in our communities so we can all find ways to thrive together. Our JP Morgan Wealth Management Advisor will be dropping gems later in the show. On this episode, I'm sitting down with a woman whose work has always been rooted in the stories of black women. Please welcome Corey Murray. I got where I am today because when I was a young girl, I had a dream about telling stories and I really only wanted to tell them in magazines. So after college, I worked really hard and I got a job at the magazine of my dreams, Essence. I found my passion in covering entertainment news. So when it was time for me to leave, I had left with such warmth and so many resources that I knew I could step out on my own. Corey, you've been such an important part of culture for so long. You do so much to amplify the stories of others, but I'm excited to talk about you today. You were part of the Essence family for more than 20 years. That comes with a certain sense of stability. What kind of conversations were you having with yourself when you decided to strike out on your own? Thank you for that. Um, I would say the first thing I really had to be honest with myself was about how much money do I have saved to mm. do this? because while a lot of my colleagues who were leaving, they were leaving to go to bigger jobs, you know, bigger salaries, but that wasn't happening for me. And I was like, am I gonna just sit here and not take a chance on myself because someone else is not, you know, tapping me on the shoulder and say, come here. Yeah. And I was really ready to make a pivot. We actually had did a story called The Power of the Pivot, where we profiled three women who had really just sat up one day and said, I want a different life. And it, one story in particular really hit me. It was the story of Bevy Smith, who, you know, she now has this catchphrase that gets greater later. Yeah. And she says she had just landed in Milan for Fashion Week. She was in some fancy, you know, Italian hotel, laid out on these very expensive Italian sheets, and she cried because she was unhappy. She wasn't doing what her life's purpose was. And I literally started crying, editing her story, two o'clock in the morning, working from home, because we're in the throes of the pandemic. And I was like, I've got to change my life. Mm -hmm. I want a different life for myself. Mm -hmm. But I said, I've got to get ready. And that meant saving money, because I was like, if I don't have a job to go to, I want to be able to live comfortably. Uh, I'm going to be completely honest. I am in a two-parent household, but I am the breadwinner. Okay. And that is in itself sometimes is challenging, but it also lets me know I've got to keep us where we have a cushion mm -hmm. to get us through. And especially now that I'm a full-time freelancer, some months I work and some months I don't. So whatever I'm making, I have to make sure it's stretched out. And I also didn't want to disrupt our lifestyle too much. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, we're probably not going out to eat as much. Yeah. Um, so little things we've had to change a bit, but we all go to sleep at night knowing that, you know, the lights are not going to get turned off. The mortgage is paid. The bills are paid. There hasn't been any disruption. And that's for me is very basic because I grew up in a home that was very much different. So sometimes for me, it is just keeping the basics. That's such an important point. You have made a career being in community with black women. In your experience, how many conversations about money typically happened in these circles, if at all? You know, it's been two groups for me. Yeah. There've been, when I've been with older women, they've mm. been sort of honest about how they've made their money, how they've been able to keep their money and the importance of keeping money. And I never forget, there was an editor who was a part of a, a layoff. This is when I was really young. We were all in her office crying, like, what are you doing? oh my God, whatever. You know, we're gonna miss you. And she looked at us and she said, I have my money together. Don't cry for me. Yeah. And that stuck with me because even though she literally was losing her job, she walked out of there with confidence because she was gonna be okay financially. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, I wanna have that kind of energy. Because you know, with any industry, they could walk into your office one day and say, hey, we've eliminated your position or we're shutting down, especially with publishing at the time. Mm -hmm. So I realized I wanted to start getting ready for that moment. Mm -hmm. I didn't wanna be like a Debbie Downer about it, but I just wanted to be ready. But then my peer circles, we were not talking about money. 
We were not being transparent about our salaries. And we why do not... you think that is? They, because they didn't know how? I think a part of it was, I don't want to say jealousy, mm. but I think it was something about, well, if I'm over here making six figures and you're over here, you know, making 70, mm -hmm. I don't want to rock the boat between us because I also don't want you to go and mess up that I'm in a higher bracket than you. No. I know, but this I was sort that, of the, the energy, though. I hate though. that mindset, though, because I'm, I'm in, in the belief of what's meant for you will be for you, but yes. also, like, I love pay transparency because then I know that I can go there as yeah. well. Yeah. I've worked in a very male-dominated space, and the very few women that I've ever worked with have been so guarded about yes. so many of their experiences yes. Yes. with that, including pay yes. transparency, but even just you know, how they've scaled mm -hmm. and what that looks like. And it leaves a lot of nuances of having to figure it out on your own. No. And then when you do that, you end up not getting as far as you probably could if you had access to the information. Exactly. We all know how important investing is, especially when it comes to setting ourselves up for the future. I just want to know how you are building wealth outside of the traditional investment strategies and savings. I actually need help in that arena and how to do it because right now I have my my own real estate, our home that we live in. I have my IRA, I have a, a 401k, I have a pension. Mm -hmm. I'm really comfortable when it comes to retirement. Like yeah. I think I'll be okay. Yeah. Um, but I would like to do some more active investing and mm -hmm. I want to be educated properly on it. And I want to be better about shoring up my company I just recently became an LLC mm -hmm. because I wanted to take myself a little more seriously because I was yeah. like, I just don't want to be out here willy-nilly as yeah. a freelance writer. Like, I want to establish myself as a business for my daughter. Mm -hmm. Like, and again, this was a part of my power of pivot. Like, no, I want to be like Corey Murray Inc. Like, mm -hmm. that's that's my goal. Hi, thank Hi. you for coming. Thank you. Please. What I cannot resist spending money on is food. Tacos, coffee, pastries, tapas, anything. And the delivery service, they have my money all the time. The thing for me that doesn't have a price are magazines. I can buy stacks of them, especially like travel magazines, because it just transports me instantly. It's just a hug I need sometimes after I come in from a long day at work. Something I always go over budget on, having a nice night at a restaurant, and I always think I don't want the night to end, and I have that one more cocktail, which ends into two. That bill becomes expensive. You have a lovely daughter. How do you discuss money and investing with her? Well, the first thing I have to do in discussing money with my daughter is let her know that my money is not her money. Ooh, okay. that's a good one, because all kids seem to think it. All. And I have to <laughs> let her know, and it's something that my big daddy used to tell me all the time, and I say to her, money does not grow on trees. Mm -hmm. But because of the way I grew up, I do overindulge in her sometimes. Mm. Because what we also are trying to instill in her is that you're gonna need to stay smart, keep your grades up, because you have a very expensive taste. You have to work hard because you want nice things, and you deserve nice things, mm -hmm. but you have to work hard for them. Yep. Your daughter is clearly such a big part of the woman you are. What I want to know is what does legacy mean to you and what do you hope she inherits from you? I want her to know that she can always be her own boss. Mm. Like she does not have to go into some big corporation and adhere to their rules, their procedures, if she knows that she can do something on her own. Yep. We really love to make sure that she knows she can create something. Yep as well. It was one time her dad was in Haiti working and we came to visit him and, you know, he's on the phone, he's willing and dealing, you know, and she just starts mocking him. And I had this vision. I was like, oh my God, she's going to come down here and start her own business. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was, you know, and I realized in watching us, she's really taking it in. I mean, you know, you, you think about it for the manners and that sort of things, uh, you know, religion. That's, but I was like, no, she's watching us work. Yeah. So we are really t trying to tell her that she could create an enterprise on her own. Wow. But if she does want to go in corporation, that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. But that's what we're instilling in her, that she can create her own legacy. And I love that for us because we both come from families who they are, I mean, my mother's still working and my mother is about to be 70. His mother literally retired, I think, in, in her 70s too. So they are, they're literally working until the end. And we are both two people who are entrepreneurs. 
something that they probably never dreamed of. Incredible insight. Corey, thank you so much for coming on to chat with me today. So many people in our community look up to you. And for me, being able to be in conversation with people who are carving out their own path is so incredible. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you for inviting me to this space. I learned some things. I have some homework to do, and I appreciate you. So thank you. And before we wrap up today, let's get down to business with our JP Morgan Wealth Management Advisor as we break down some of those intimidating financial concepts in a segment we like to call Make It Make Sense. Hey, Lenon, so excited for you to be here. Hello, I'm glad to be here with you. All righty, let's dive in. One thing Corey mentioned was wanting to get more informed when it came to investing. What advice do you have if people are feeling nervous about not knowing enough to get in the game? I love that we're starting with a place of maybe the fear of it mm -hmm. or how I'm gonna be viewed if I say something silly, mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of feel like that every day and I've been doing this for a very long time. <laughs> I uh, love that. I mean, I do. Yeah. I mean, you never know it all and I think that's the beauty of it all. It is not my goal to know everything. Um, I wanna have the folks in my corner and the professionals that I know that I can go to who are walking wells of knowledge that I can say, hey, I don't know, I don't know anything about X or I know very little about Y. Help me with that. When does that come into play? I feel no differently mm -hmm. than our viewers and everybody in the community that's like, I don't know where to start. That's okay. Just start. Yes. Ask the very first question and then ask the second. It's what I do. I like literally still do that. I love that. At what age would you advise your clients to start talking to their kids about money management? Yes. Ooh. Yes. yes, just yes. <laughs> yes. So I, All Asians. Yeah, yes. yes. The answer is yes and yesterday. Yes. You just, you can't, there isn't an early enough time. I, I can tell you in our own family, I've got two babies. I'm, I'm sure they're thrilled that mommy's calling them babies. They are 20 and 18. Oh. I've got two babies. And the truth is we've been working with them about their money, certainly not talking about stocks and bonds, not investing, but talking to them about money management. Mm -hmm. You know, stuff comes in, if you spend it, it goes out, which means nothing is saved over here. Mm -hmm. Deal with that. Mm -hmm. We've been talking with our kids about that since they were probably six or seven. Um, and then as they get a little bit older, we can talk, talk about strategies to do something more and let your money work with you and for you. We have to talk to our kids like immediately. The moment children can understand the concept of wanting, mm -hmm. that's the time you need to be starting to talk to your kids about money. Exactly. And the want in, in our culture comes quick. Yeah. These days, I imagine so many people are planning for the unfortunate possibility of career interruptions. How can people make sure they're financially prepared for something like that? You know, that's a big one. Uh, I have to tell you, that's a big one. Um, and the interruptions can come at any time sometimes planned, sometimes not. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you have uh, one bread earner that's like, okay, I, I think I wanna go home and be with kids. Mm. Or I just don't feel well anymore and I'm exhausted. Or mm -hmm. I'm dealing with anxiety. Or I mean, it could be anything. The biggest thing it really is about that money management again. If X is coming in, how much do I need to make sure that, you know, our lifestyle is covered? I shouldn't say lifestyle that our needs are covered. Mm. I should be careful about lifestyle, that our needs are covered and being able to separate the needs from the wants, from the wishes, mm. right? So you need to be able to have X amount of dollars in this pot over here. We like to give advice to say to make sure you've got six months worth of rainy day. Mm -hmm. Corey mentioned that she's the financial head of the household. As the culture around this shifts and more women find themselves in this position, what guidance would you lend to these women? Listen, you just have to get everybody involved. Mm. Just getting everybody involved in, here's where we are. Yep. We can do these things. We might be able to do some of these things, these things we cannot do. As a family, what are gonna be our non-negotiables? Get, get everybody involved, your partner, your children, get everybody, let everybody be a part of and have ownership in the conversation. Thank you so much, Lenon. Again, I am just loving these conversations. <laughs> Thank you so much for just being a, a ray of sunshine. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs>
And with that, we're closing the book on this episode of With the Bag to Match. Again, I want to say thank you to Corey Murray for sharing more of her story and strategy with us today. As always, I want to shout out our JP Morgan Wealth Management Advisor, Lenon, for making it all make sense, and she does so incredibly well. Before we go, I want us to all remember that the bag is far more than just a fashion statement. It's a symbol of financial empowerment. Don't forget to join us again for our next episode as we talk about building your best financial life with the bag to match. See you next time.